and then it'd come back to me. When you make the most of what the earth gives you, something special happens. At the International Culinary Institute of Myrtle Beach, you'll learn to apply both passion and technique to transform local and seasonal into sensational. You'll discover social responsibility and how to turn your passion for food into a sustainable future with tuition you can afford. You found your passion. Now discover your future. Visit ICIMB.org and apply today. Finest students, my name is Catherine Medrano. I'm an instructor here at the ICI, which is the International Culinary Institute of Myrtle Beach at the Ori Georgetown Technical College. Uh, the first thing I want to tell everybody is that the summer and fall opportunity to apply and uh, start classes here at the school is open right now. If you're a South Carolina resident, the opportunity for up to 75% of your college tuition can be covered. So you should look into this. You should talk to the people that would help you at your school and you should get yourself set up to come to school here in September, or even if you can manage it for the summer semester. Today, we're gonna to talk about uh, a recipe. It's a fairly simple one. It's a Cuban black bean soup. Um, it, I, we sent the recipe for everybody to take a look at. I hope you have it. It is a fairly simple recipe, but along the lines of having a simple recipe today, I really want to talk about the fundamentals of cooking. Um, so we're going to start right here. I have a green bucket and a red bucket. I'm sure you guys are familiar with these. The green bucket is soapy water. The red bucket is the sanitizer. Um, this is a fundamental. Having these things ready to go at all times is important. I'm going to put them under the table, which is exactly where they belong. I have a backup of gloves under the table. I also have a compost bucket and a discard container underneath the table. I'm going to start by putting on my gloves and we're going to talk about this Cuban black bean soup. I'm going to take you through all of the recipe. Um, but there are going to be certain things that I'm going to substitute in order to make it come out as a good or a servable black bean soup today in front of all of you. So um, the first thing I would do in this recipe is I would set myself up with my garnishes. Um, I'm going to want my garnishes ready to go as soon as the black bean soup is hot and spun in the blender. Um, so the first thing we have is the green onions. Um, and with the green onions, I just want to start right off by talking about sharp knives. Uh, the importance of a sharp knife in any of the work that we're doing today, um, it, it can't be underestimated. A sharp knife, uh, especially in a soup like this, where you want your garnishes to look really good or you want your vegetables to be cut uniform, a sharp knife is really important. So here we go with the scallions. I'm gonna cut the end off right here. The entire green onion is usable. Um, we're only gonna do four portions of soup today, so I'm not gonna cut the whole onion. I'm gonna save some of it, but I'm gonna cut it really, really, really thin. The flavor on the green onion is strong and it's a garnish. It's not to be the entire soup. So very, very thin garnishes here. And I'm gonna take a bit of the green too uh, because it just looks nice. You can cut these any number of ways. I like to cut them very thin on a bias. It, it'll stand up on your soup at the end and look really fantastic. So just thin, just thin on a bias and looking beautiful. There we go. I'll put these aside and hold them for our garnish at the end. I also have sour cream, which I actually made yesterday. Uh, sour cream is just heavy cream with a bit of lemon juice. Uh, you can hold it at room temperature overnight and it will be sour cream in the morning. So scallions, sour cream, and we're going to take our onions. I already diced the onions, but I really want you to take a look at them. They're really small, they're uniform, 
They uh, are gonna be a really nice garnish on the top of our black bean soup. We're gonna season it with a little bit of sherry vinegar and olive oil. And we'll hit it with a little salt and pepper. The pepper is a fresh grind black pepper. Uh, I say this all the time, every day in my classes, the more often that you can grind up your herbs and spices yourself, if you can grow them yourself, if you can grind them yourself, the, that, the better. You know um, the freshness and the quality of what you have in front of you whenever you've got something that you've ground yourself. Okay, so my garnishes are ready for later. Um, that's the, uh, the onions, the sour cream, and the green onions. We also have already done our boiled rice. And again, I just, I, back to fundamentals, I really just wanna talk about the fact that the rice isn't overcooked. It's not sticky, it's not starchy. You can see individual grains in here. It's not mushy, it's not hard. The proper garnishes on your soup are gonna what take what takes it from sort of the, the good to the great. So the rice is ready, it's still warm. Whenever we have the soup ready, we'll add this as a garnish on the top. And then we'll get right into the soup. Uh, the first ingredient on there is of course the beans. I have raw beans here. Uh, these beans were soaked overnight. You can see, I, I'll try to cut even through one of them. It's uh, it's. It's still real hard and very white in the center. A raw bean, like I said, were, were soaked overnight. Um, I have some cooked beans that we're gonna put in our soup so that we can have it ready in time for all of you to see an actual cooked black bean soup. But the difference is here that the beans are cooked all the way through and they're very soft, but they're not mush. Uh, they're not blown up and uh, they're not retaining all kinds of water so that you lose the black bean flavor and you wind up with a watery flavor, but cooked black beans. Okay, so we're gonna move right onto the onions. The onions are gonna go in the pan with the bacon. The bacon is over here and I already have it cooked. If you look at the pan, you'll see that there's no soft bacon in there. It's all crunchy. There's nothing that's gonna be in the soup that's raw at the end. It'll all be, uh, all, you know, all the flavor that you can get out of it is in there. That fat that's in the pan, that's where you get tons of the flavor that you want in a Cuban black bean soup. The bacon flavor, the ham flavor is very important. So we'll add our onions in, just as the recipe says. And we're gonna let them cook just a little bit. And we'll go back to the garlic. This is a garlic clove that's been peeled. Um, I like always to use fresh garlic right off of the head and to peel it myself and cut it myself. I prefer not to ever take anything that's already been cut or even anything that's already been cleaned. The most flavor that you're gonna get is the, the garlic that comes right off of the head. I minced it up very small. Um, for purposes of getting it really cooked quickly today. It's, it's very small, but it doesn't have to be quite this small whenever you're making it. Uh, the, garlic, uh, the garlic flavor is in Cuban cooking, very, very important. Right up there with the bacon fat. And I like to take this process slow. I like the onions and the garlic to go real slow and to sweat in here, no color at all. You wanna be able to smell all of those things right away, right off the top. I do like to season it a little bit now. Bacon, you know, has a lot of, of salt in it and the ham hock that we're gonna add later also has a, a lot of salt, but this, uh, the, the salt in the onions and the garlic helps bring out sweetness. Uh, you wanna be able to smell all of that goodness right away. The bacon fat mixed with the onions and the garlic together, pretty incredible. So we're gonna let it just cook for a minute and we're gonna get ready to add our beans, our stock, 
the oregano, and the cumin. So I have cumin here that's in uh, seeds and I have it already ground. This is what I worked with this morning. I put it into just a regular old coffee grinder and came up with a, the ground cumin. Again, I really, really prefer to use um, as whole grain or green or, uh, or um, seed as I possibly can in my recipes so that I know exactly what I'm adding. I know how old it is. I know how fresh it is. I can, I can smell the oregano or I can smell the, the cumin and know how fresh it is, whether or not it's been sitting on a shelf for a really long time or whether it's gonna do something really nice for my final product. Okay. So our onions are just about translucent here. It's really, really fragrant. I'm gonna go ahead and add the cumin and the oregano. Let it cook just a little bit. Another minute or two more before I add in my beans. The Cuban flavor, cumin flavor really, it just, uh, it takes the onions and the garlic and the bacon to the next level in terms of what it smells like. Oh, amazing. Okay, we're gonna add our black beans in. And now we'll talk a little bit about ham hocks. Ham hock, a ham hock, this is what a smoked ham hock looks like. I like to soak my ham hock um, for really a, at least 30 minutes before I put it into my soup. This, the smoked ham hock is already cooked, so it doesn't actually have to cook in the soup. Um, and that's why I chose to use this today. If I use a raw ham hock, I have to let this soup cook for um, at least an hour and a half, and we don't have time for that. So I'm using the already cooked beans and I'm using the smoked ham hock. If you use a raw ham hock, it's gotta be in there at least an hour and a half, at least. Um, so we're gonna put the, the smoked ham hock in here and we're gonna add in our stock. This is chicken stock that we make here at the school. Um, it's made in any one of these kitchens all day, every day. When we keep it on hand all of the time, it's a much better option than using anything um, that you could buy at the store or through a vendor because it's, uh, we, we control how much sodium is in it. And we know that these days people are really looking to adjust their diets down in terms of sodium. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the ham hock for just a minute here. Um, I took a ham hock from earlier in the day and I'm gonna just show you a little bit about it. So this is the skin of the ham hock and it's all around the outside. Once it's been, it's spent its time in the soup and it's flavored the soup, we take it out of there. We pull the skin off. This skin is fantastic. It can be used, um, you could take it and spread it out, skin or take all of that fat off of it, put it in the oven and, or a dehydrator and let it go, let it dry out. And it would be a great little garnish on the top, uh, chopped up small. You could save it for another dish. It could garnish something else on your menu. Um, but here is what the inside of the ham hock looks like. So there's lots of fat in there um, and there is some meat. I've pulled some of the meat off. This is what it looks like when it's finished. Now this is of course a smoked product and the smoking process and the brining process gives it a pink color to it. Uh, but there's, it's muscle meat. The, the hock is what connects the bottom of the leg of the, of the pig to the foot of the pig. So it's, uh, you know, the leg ends here or the leg would end here and the foot would start here. Uh, we trim off all of this fat from the outside. And what you're left with on the inside is this meat in little sections all the way around the ham hock. Uh, we'll take it off and we're gonna dice this so that we can use this as garnish in the soup. Let me just check and make sure this is ready. This is working. Okay. We're going to get it up to a boil. You can see the ham hock in there. You can see all those herbs and spices in there. Okay. We'll come back. We're going to dice this up. 
I, I try to remind people that are in my students in my classes all the time that this is an upscale restaurant. I want everything prepared as if we are an upscale restaurant. So when we do garnishes, our garnishes all always need to be small um, and appropriately sized for whatever the dish is that we're doing. So with that in mind, when we cook, cut our scallions very small, um, we're going to keep that in mind with this as well. Like I mentioned earlier, ham hocks can be really salty. So there's another reason why we want to keep this very small. When we add it into the soup, it's going to be sitting right on top. Our guest is going to stir it. This really delicious option whenever you put these, this, what it does for soup is just amazing. Between the smokiness and the pork flavors, it just, uh, it really elevates the soup flavor. Um, but you want the guests to see this right on top and you want them to have the opportunity to mix it into their soup. If you have big, big pieces, it's going to ruin the flavor of the soup if it's very salty. So we're just about done with this. And we'll be able to top our, our soup one more time. I'll go over it. Be able to top our soup with the ham hock, the sour cream, the scallions, and the boiled rice. Okay, we'll go back to our soup now. Another reminder, something that I say all day, every day in my classes, did you taste it? Did you taste it? Did you taste it? I think, uh, I think my students must say that to themselves in their sleep because I say it so much in the classroom. Did you taste it? I always keep tasting spoons right next to my range so that I can always taste what I have here. It's not a finished product, but I wanna know here at this point, if it's salty, if I need to adjust any flavors, if there's anything I can do to bring out more flavor. So I'm gonna taste it regardless of the fact that it's not quite finished. Okay, I am, I'm gonna take a little risk here and I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to my soup. I think, um, you know, based on my experience, I think that this soup is going to be just a little under seasoned right now. Uh, remembering that I'm going to take this ham hock out and we aren't quite going to cook it for as long as we normally would. So the saltiness of the ham hock hasn't really reached its full potential in the soup. Um, if we had the full hour and a half to do this, of course, it would reach that point. We're going to let it come to a boil. We're going to take that ham hock out and we're going to put it in the blender. This school, uh, we're really, really lucky. It's this school when it comes to equipment. The, uh, this is a Vitamix. Vitamix is, in my opinion, really the best possible blender that you can get. Um, whenever you turn this on and run it up to high, pretty much anything that you're gonna put in is gonna come out really, really smooth. And I, that's why I really like it. So I'm gonna take my ham hock out. And at this point, I would take my ham hock, I would peel it, and I would take the ham out of it, and I would dice it like we did earlier. But because it's the magic of TV, we're going to do it like this. Okay. Here we go. We'll start and do this in batches. first batch it's going to go right here we'll put the lid on very tightly make sure it's real snug in there keep one hand on top of it at all times make sure that the button on the left is down at variable make sure the speed is all the way down at zero and then we turn it on we're going to let it run for a second or two and then we're going to slowly start turning the dial up so that the uh, it spins faster and faster.
and I'm going to take it all the way as far as we can without it overflowing. Remember that this is really hot inside. And if it comes through the top or if it splashes, not gonna be good. Okay, we'll just let it, let it run for a minute at the highest speed. Turn it off. And we're gonna return this to the, to the pot. We'll add our second batch where the really good stuff is. And we have our beans. Okay. Top goes back on, nice and snug. We're on variable. We're gonna turn our, our speed all the way down to one and turn it back on, holding the lid. And turn it up as, as we can without making it overflow, but remembering that we really want a really smooth soup. We have it all the way to 10 and I'm going to leave it here and let it whip for a bit. I want this soup to come out really, really smooth. I hope you can hear me over this noise. Okay. Okay. We're going to have a nice smooth soup here. Put our soup, turn the flame back on. I'm gonna bring it up to another simmer. Let it sit for a minute and we'll get ready to garnish our soup bowls. always important the china that we pick out you want your soup to uh, show off the best it possibly can it's a darker soup so I like the idea of having uh, a nice bright white soup uh, what nice bright white bowl soup looks great it's back at a simmer I can see the bubble bubbles all around and when I plate I'm not gonna fill my ladle all the way. I'm gonna bounce it a little bit so I don't get drip marks. I have a towel that I can put underneath. I'm gonna fill my soup bowl just about up to that ridge. Second time over here. soup back, keep my area clean so that I can plate very easily. Here's my, my warm rice. The rice goes right in the center. Really important component of pretty much all diets in, the, in Cuba. Available at every single meal. and helps, helps give a lot of body to this soup. Next, we're gonna put the onions that have been marinating in olive oil and sherry. 
right on top of the onions, or I'm sorry, right on top of the rice. Our ham hock will go next. You want it right on top so they can see it. This is sort of the, the uh, piece de resistance in their soup. So you really want them to see that, that garnish on there. Sour cream. For a little added treat on top. And then our scallions. So we've taken a really simple soup and created really something very beautiful out of it. And I guess really all I have left to say is I hope you hope I see you here on campus and we get to make this recipe together. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.